proudly we hail. American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Titled The Landmark. This is the story of how a young airman learned that a landmark can be something of far more importance than just a familiar sight, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, here's important news for all ex servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you realize. Yes, the United States Air Force has a new policy that offers big new benefits to veterans of all the armed forces. The Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, the Air Force wants you, and they'll put you right on the job. For full details, write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the folder for prior service men. You'll see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Remember, you've earned credit toward a fine retirement in the service. So protect your initial investment as an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, The Landmark. This is the way an RC-121D sounds when you're riding inside it. 135,000 pounds and $2,225,000 worth of plane filled with electronic gear. A far cry from the solitary sentry that walked his post on the shore of the New England coast back in 1780. But doing just about the same job. Guarding our country against attack. You don't always think about those things when you're a radar observer in the crew of one of these RC-121Bs, such as I am. But when you return from a 15-hour tour of duty far across the Atlantic Ocean, you know you've been part of something big. You said it, Elmer. But you're not wasting our time. That's a good feeling, you know what I mean? I get it every time I see the coastline again when we come back from a flight. Yeah, I understand. Can you see the house yet? I know it's kind of hard to see now the way the sun slants should be right there behind those two dunes. Oh, there it is. See the tower? Oh, yeah. It's funny the way it sits there all by itself with the tower on top. I wonder what kind of people live in it. Just people like you and me, I guess. I wonder what they'd say if they knew we looked for their house every time we returned from a mission. Yeah. Come to think of it, it's sort of become a landmark to us, hasn't it? Aircraft commander to crew. Prepare for landing. Oh, we're coming in. Let's get our gear together. Just an idle conversation that day between Fred and me, but looking back now, it was also the beginning of a series of events that were to leave their imprint on several lives, not least of all mine. Our crew had Wednesday off that week, and each of us had his own idea of how to spend it. What are you planning to do, Alma? Well, I don't know. This is about the first warm day we've had. Hey, what about going to the beach with me? That suits me. I could use some sun. Well, I'll go get the car. Where are we going to go? Well, let's ride up the coast a ways, huh? Somewhere where it's nice and secluded. Hey, how's this? Well, looks okay. Nice little cove down there. Sure, I'll pull her up here. Hey, good enough. Hey, Fred. What's the matter? Look at that house back there. Hey, what about it? Well, it looks awfully familiar. Yeah, you're right. That's... Hey, it's our landmark house. 
sure it's the one. Why, from here, it looks like it could stand a coat of paint. Well, that might be the distance. Come on, let's go over and take a look at it. What for? Just a house. Come on, let's go down the beach. I want to get a good start on a Cape Cod suntan. What well, is nice and clear, isn't it? Yeah, but, man, it's still a little chilly. I don't think it's bad for this time of year. <coughs> hey, where are you going? You had enough already? Yeah, enough for now. <coughs> I think I'll go up to the house. Sort of see who lives there. Still wondering, huh? Oh, no, I'm curious, I guess. Hey, wait a minute. You see that old man by that shack over there? Yeah, yeah, what about him? Well, it could be he lives in the house, so maybe he knows who does. Why don't you go talk to him first? Sure, sure, why not? Hey, mister! <laughs> he must be hard of hearing. Come on, let's go over. Hey, mister! I wonder if you could help us out. Huh? What's that? Uh, could you tell us who lives... They li- don't have to yell. I ain't the... Oh... Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sorry. Uh, do you happen to know who lives in that house up there on the knoll? Mike? Well, well, who does? Does what? Live there. Nobody. Nobody? That's what I said, young fella, nobody. And there ain't nobody been living there for some time. For some long time. Well, after that day on the shore, I stopped looking forward to seeing the house on our return trips. You know, a house without people living in it is a, well, a dead thing. And the warm, friendly glow I'd felt upon seeing it just wasn't there anymore. However, on one mission several weeks later, as we approached our base... Well, I guess it won't be long now until we're home. Do you see the coast yet, Fred? Kind of dark down there. Oh, yeah. There it is now. Say, Elmer. Elmer. Yeah? Uh, didn't that old fellow, you remember, that, that fisherman that told us about the house? And what about him? Uh, didn't he say the house was empty? He did? Well, look. That is the house, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Hey, it's got a light in it. That's what I was going to tell you. Well, somebody must have moved in or... Or broke in. Oh, I don't think so. Fred is too old looking for that. I suppose so. I tell you what, we're off tomorrow. Want to go along with me and take another look? Sure, it's a good place to swim. Count me in. Yeah, here we are. I don't see anybody around. There's a boat out there. Oh, yeah. It looks like the old man we talked to. He must be doing some fishing. Well, he wouldn't be much help anyway. Come on, let's go on up. We don't need any introduction. Yeah, let's go. As we drew near the house, we could see that it was much older than we thought. It looked like it had once been a small seaside hotel built maybe back in the 1880s with a big high tower right in the middle of it. And it also looked like it hadn't been lived in since the 80s. Sure looks beat up. Oh, yes, the wind and sand. Boy, look at it piled up there all around the house. On the porches everywhere. Let's see if somebody's home. I don't hear anybody coming. Well, let's go around the side door. You know, Elmer, it's broad daylight, the sun's shining, and yet there's there's something kind of spooky about this place. (laughs) Yeah, I know what you mean. Look at those dusty windows. And the door is sagging all over. It should... Hey, Fred, listen. It's a girl, crying. Yeah, there she is in the kitchen. I wonder what's wrong with her. Oh, come on, let's try the door. Uh, 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 pardon me, miss. Uh, it, uh, is there something the matter? Go away. Can we do anything for go you? Go away. Please, go away. Come on, Fred. We better go. Now, what do you think she could be crying about? I wouldn't know, but I wish she'd let us help her. Well, we tried. I guess there's nothing we can do. Say, Elmer, tell you what. I've heard there's some good fishing up the coast farther. I think I'd like to look into it. Want to come along? No, uh, you... You go ahead, Fred. I'll... I'll stay around here and take a swim. All right. See you in a couple of hours. I went down to the water and swam for a bit, but I just couldn't get the girl out of my mind. So when I saw the old man bringing his boat in, I went over to help him pull it up on the beach. Ah, oh, thanks, young fella. Well, I'm glad to be of assistance, sir. Well, that's a mighty nice catch you have there. <laughs> it's not bad. 
It was running pretty good. Well, I'll give you a hand with unloading it, if it's okay. Oh, oh, don't mind if you do. You don't sound like you come from around here. Well, I'll tell you, my hometown is St. Louis, but I do come from around here right now. I'm in the Air Force. I'm stationed at the base here. Air Force? Well, I'll be hanged. I got a grandson in the Air Force. Hey, is that so? Yes, he's a mechanic on one of these here jet planes. Uh, what do you do? Well, I'm a search radar operator on an RC-121. Oh, oh, yeah, that's them patrol planes. I heard about what they're doing. <laughs> they told me all about them at the Ground Observers Corps station. Ground Observers Corps? Is there a station near here? Oh, yes, up the coast ways. I stop in every now and then, keeping company now, my name's Silas Adams. Well, I'm glad to meet you, sir. I'm Airman First Class Elmer Atkins. You're the same young fellow that was here a couple of weeks ago with the other one? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry I was so short with you, but I get a lot of nosy people along here sometimes, and I'm sort of responsible for the house. Oh, sure, that's all right. I notice there's, uh, there's uh, somebody in it now. No, that would be Martha. Martha Wesley. Just got here last night. She owns the place, you know. Oh. Inherited it from a great uncle. House has been shuttered for nigh on five years. Oh? The first time she's ever seen it. <laughs> oh, well, that, that about does it. Thanks for giving me a hand, Elma. Oh, glad to have been a help. Well, I better be getting back to my shack. I'll see you again. So long. When he left, I sat down on the beach, still thinking of the girl, but I must have dropped off to sleep because I suddenly awoke with a start. I looked up and saw Silas standing on the shore, staring out at the ocean. Uh, what's the matter, Silas? She's swimming out there. You mean Martha? Yes, and she's going out too far. Well, is she a good swimmer? Uh, she seems to be, but the tide's due to go out any minute. It's a mite dangerous out there now, no matter how good a swimmer she is. Well, let's call her back. Oh, no, she'll never hear us. Well, we can't just stand here. I better get out there. Swimming in the ocean is no easy task, especially when it's choppy as it was that day. I had a hard time keeping track of her. She was swimming steadily. It seemed to me as if I was hardly making any headway. I called her, but she heard me above the noise of the ocean. She gave no sign of it. Just kept going out and out. I redoubled my effort, put everything I had into it. And finally, I just about caught up with her. I... Hey, Martha. What do you want? Look, you... You better come back. Why? Well, the, the tide's due to go out. The undertow will get you. I feel angry. Oh, come on. Look, this is no time for arguing. Just do me a favor. Huh? Come on in. Well, all right. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Now, let's start back. You need any help? No, thanks. I can get along. Well, she's a good swimmer, all right. We could have made it back to the shore okay, except for that sudden surging pull of our legs, as if the whole ocean had us locked in a death grip, never to let go. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Landmark. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Listen. Listen to the sound of the jet A. To former servicemen, qualified veterans, this jet age offers an unlimited future. Men with technical skills are needed now in the Air Force. Men who have learned the vital skills of modern defense in our armed forces. If you are such a veteran, you should consult your Air Force recruiter. Ask him about the new benefits available now under the Career Incentive Act. He'll give you the facts in a special personalized prior serviceman's folder. The new reenlistment bonuses, the increased allowances and a pay grade that may surprise you. If yours is one of the many needed skills, there's an important place for you on Uncle Sam's flying team. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Landmark. I think I would have given two cents for our chances to get into shore that afternoon. My arms suddenly seemed to lose all feeling. It was like flailing two sticks out in front of me. 
powerless against the solid wall of removable water. Just then, though. Hang on. Hang on. I'll be there. Oh. Okay, Silas. Now, give me your hand. <laughs> easy now, easy. <laughs> Try not to rock the boat. And now, uh, up you go. Yeah. Uh, that's it. <sighs> Oh, silence. Now, don't try to talk. Just get your breath. It's all right now. It's all right. In a few minutes, we were back on the beach. Tired, but otherwise none the worse for wear. Well, I'll be leaving you two. I have to take my fish down to the village. Well, thanks again, Silas. Oh, yes, Silas. Thanks. I'll never do that again. I don't think you will. Goodbye. Hello. Oh. Well, you're Martha Wesley, huh? How'd you know my name? <laughs> I dug it out of Silas before. Oh. I really don't know how to thank you for what you did. Oh, come on. It's not necessary. Oh, won't you come up to the house and have a cup of coffee? Oh, fine. I could go for something warm right now. Another cup? Thanks. I think I will. Good. And so when my parents passed on, I decided to go to New York. I wanted to be an actress. But wanting to be and being are two different things. Oh? What happened? Well, I was there for three years. Three years of hounding the agents by day and working as waitress at night. The only acting I ever did was in drum school. Too much competition? That. And too few jobs available. Huh. How long can one go on like that? Three years were enough for me, so yesterday I picked up and came here. I, I thought maybe I'd open a tourist house or something, but when I got here and I, I saw my tumble-down inheritance, I just, well, you know. Yeah. So this morning I thought I'd take a swim. I wanted to be alone. I, I thought I'd get a new perspective on things and maybe try to figure out what to do next, but Oh, it's no use. I, I know there's nothing for me here, nor anywhere else. So, uh, you you wanted to make a, a tourist house out of this? Yeah. Me and my bright idea. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not such a bad idea. That's probably what it used to be. Listen, Martha, I tell you what. Why don't you hold off for a while before you make up your mind to do anything else? You know, the men in my crew sort of have a warm spot for this house. And they do? Why? Well, our wing comes under the Continental Air Defense Command, and that means our planes fly radar defense missions over the Atlantic. And you're on one of these things? Mm-hmm. I'm a radar scope watcher. I saw a plane yesterday. Was that one of yours? <laughs> Probably. You see, we sort of watch for this house when we head into the base. Now that we know there's somebody living in it, especially someone like, well, <laughs> a nice person, we'd sure hate to see it empty again. I didn't realize. No, I guess many people don't. See, they, they probably think of planes as just machines flying overhead. But look, I got an idea. Mm -hmm. However, I'll, I'll have to talk it over with the fellas first. But maybe we can figure out something to help you solve your problem. Okay? All right, Elmer. And thanks. <laughs> So that's it, huh? It's too bad she's had such tough luck. Seems like a nice girl, too. But she's the nicest I've ever met or ever want to meet. Oh, so it's that way. It's kind of sudden, isn't it? Well, maybe, but that's beside the point. See, what I'd like to do, Fred, is help her out. I'm sure, but what can you do? Well, what do you think of this? Suppose you and I and maybe some of the other fellows went to work on that house in our spare time and got it back into shape. Well, then maybe she could rent it out to tourists and stay here for good. Or as long as you do. Oh, come on. It's not me I'm thinking of right now. She's at the end of her rope. She needs help bad. Well, from what you say, that's sure a fact. All right, Elmer, it's okay by me. I'd be glad to help out any way I can. Well, the next weekend, we started the job of getting the house back into shape with the three of us and a lot of the fellows from our crew pitching in. There was a lot of painting, carpentry work, and wallpapering to do. It was work, all right, but it was fun, too, because as the house changed, Martha changed also. She just seemed happier, more contented. It was good to see, especially for me. During those weeks, she started keeping a light burning in the tower at night. And when she heard our plane returning from the mission, 
She blinked the light. Then one day, about six weeks later, the house was finished. Well, that's the last curtain. Huh? Oh, gosh, who would have dreamed that it could look like this? Yeah, a regular transformation. Well, now all we need is some tourists. No, not this year anymore. The tourist season's about over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I suppose we'll have to figure out something to keep Martha occupied now that the house is finished. Oh, I don't know about that. I've got a surprise for you. Surprise? It. You, you're not going away. No, Elmer. I haven't thought about going away for a long time. Not since I met you. Or Fred. Several days later, preparations for the Atlantic Barrier Command operation began. Briefings on every phase of it, from purpose to organization to execution, along with training and retraining. The exercise was designed to test the effectiveness of the new command, and the Air Force wanted it perfect down to the last detail. So we didn't get much of an opportunity to get out to see Martha. One Sunday, though... Hi, Martha. Hello, Elmer. Oh. <laughs> letter from your boyfriend? No. Just a letter from somebody in New York. Oh. I didn't expect you. Well, the phone booth was busy, so I just hopped in the car and drove up. I don't get to see much of you anymore, do I? Well, no, but look, it's only until the operation's over. Then we can go back to the way it was. If you want it. I'm not sure what I want anymore. Oh, Martha, you... You seem kind of down in the dumps. What is it? I don't know. I've got my house fixed up so nice now. Thanks to you and all the other fellas, but... But it sits there, empty and lonely, like myself, like the ocean out there. You're lucky, Elmer. You have something in your life that has meaning. It must be good to be a part of something like that. Don't forget, Martha. In a way, you're part of it now, too. We didn't know exactly when the operation would take place, surprise being a part of it, but several days later, while our plane was far over the Atlantic Ocean, I was sitting at my radar scope when suddenly I spotted something on the bluish screen. <clears throat> uh, recorder, ACO scope number three. I have an initial track at 090, range 110. Recorder to ACO number three. Your track is designated track three. A bogey, or an unidentified plane. From then on, a complicated procedure takes place until in a matter of minutes, the plane is identified as an intruder, and a fighter plane is on its way to engage it. Air Commander to crew, I have just been notified by headquarters that this is the opening phase of Operation Barrier Command. Good luck. From then until ten hours later, we were kept busy spotting the many planes that were sent to try to get through us without being stopped. It was long and hard work. But from all apparent results, we seemed to have been highly successful. The operation and our tour of duty finished, we headed back to our base. Tired, but satisfied that we'd done our best. As we neared the coast, I went to the window to check Martha's light below. But I was in for a surprise. What's the matter, Rama? Fred, do you see a light anywhere down there? You mean at Martha's? Let me look. No, I don't. You think there's something wrong? I don't know. Or maybe she forgot. Well, it'd be the first time. I... No, I... I don't think she'd forget. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going out there tomorrow morning. That's what I'm going to do. The house was bright and shining that morning from the cleaning and painting we'd given her. But still, there was something about it that made me think of the first day I'd seen it. And I was somehow ready for what I found even before I opened the envelope that I saw on the door addressed to me. Dear Elmer, just after you left yesterday, I got a phone call from an agent in New York. He had also written me the letter, letter you saw, saw me reading that day. He said he had a part in a play for me, a good part. And I just couldn't resist his offer. I'm sorry I won't be here for the operation, but I hope it'll be a success. I also hope you'll understand and forgive me. Please, Please write, to, write me to me as soon as, as, soon as, you, as can. you can. Well, she was gone. Now, for the first time, I realized how much I loved her. 
and how easy it would have been for me to tell her so, but <laughs> it was too late. I'd missed my chance. As I walked back to my car, I saw Silas standing on the beach, looking up at the sky. The birds are flying south, Elma. See? Yeah. I see, all right. But remember this, son. They always come back. Because this is where they belong. They always come back. One day, a few weeks later, as our plane returned again from a mission... Hey, Elmer, there's a light in Martha's house. Yeah? Don't you want to come and take a look? What for? It's probably Silas. No, I've had it, Fred. I've looked down there for the last time. But I reckoned without Fred. The next morning, he insisted that I go along with him to the house. I didn't feel like arguing, so I gave in. Well, we'll see what's what, huh, boy? Yeah, sure. Let's go in through the kitchen here. Door's open. Hey, look. Martha? Martha! Elmer. Oh, Elmer, dear. I'll see you too later. Oh, darling, I've, I've missed you so much. So much. And I, you. But I'm back now. For good? No. No? Oh, don't look like that, dear. And, and listen to me. I am never going back to New York. When I got there, I knew I didn't want a part in a play or anything else like it. Ever. Oh, but I, I, yes, I thought... Yes, dear. So did I. But it suddenly had no meaning. I don't want to become an actress anymore. I only want to be with you. That's why I came back. Oh, darling. I'm finished yet. I want to be by your side in two ways. As your wife. After you proposed to me. And wearing the same uniform. The same? You, you mean you... Yes. I enlisted in New York. And as soon as I finish my basic training, I hope I'll be able to really help my man. If you're a service veteran, think about this for a moment. Are you making the most of your service gain skills? Well, here's something you should know. You may qualify to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will be a pleasant surprise. The Air Force needs men with training and experience gained in all the armed forces. If you're skilled in one of the critical jobs needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage. Your Air Force recruiter has a prior serviceman's folder that will give you full details. Write or visit him right away for your copy. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>